Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen. This is Pastor Sesum. Amen. Senior Pastor of Bethesda Revival Center. Amen. Glory to God. We're located in the city of Riverside. Amen. That's in Southern California. And we want to say God bless you and thank you for inviting us into your home this evening. Amen. We know that there's many places that you could have uh, joined in with via Facebook or via YouTube. But you've, you've decided to allow us into your home. And we're grateful with, for that. Amen. Glory to God. You know, tonight we want to deal with the topic of the Holy Spirit baptism. We'll use the word the Holy Spirit upon. We want to deal with his infilling power. Amen. Glory to God. Now we're going to do a, a series on this. I'll give you part one of that tonight. Amen. So we say God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. We trust that God. Amen. Has a word. And I understand that what we're teaching tonight may appear on the surface to be a little bit uh, uh, elementary for many of you. But, you know, Paul said, well, the book of Hebrews said we ought to give more earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. Amen. Praise God. And my endeavor is to build uh, the foundation, uh, amen, for the Holy Spirit within you. Amen. Glory to God. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to move on to teaching about the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that we can have Christians in the church that are functioning in the gifts and with power. Amen, somebody. And so we give God the praise for you, you and you. I'm going to have a word of prayer and we're going to jump straight on into our lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you right now. We magnify and we exalt your name. God, we just thank you, Lord God, for every viewer. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray, Father God, for your anointing. We pray for your blessing upon us, O oh God. Glory to God, hallelujah, to teach your word, the word of the kingdom. We thank you for that, Lord God. God, we also pray, Father God, that those who are viewing this broadcast, hallelujah, and following along with us in their Bibles, Lord God, that they would be edified, that they would be blessed in their hearts, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that they have ears to hear what your spirit is saying unto the church. We thank you, Father God, that this lesson will go uh, within them more than just hearing the word, but do, uh, onto the doing of the word. We thank you. Now we come against every foe to faith, any and every spirit that would try to hinder us. We rebuke and cast down. We thank you, Father God, for the technology that we're, in, we're using. We thank you for power over the airwaves, Father God. We thank you right now, glory to God, that the Wi-Fi functions, the cameras function properly. Lord God, the networks proper uh, function properly. We thank you, Father God, that this message is received in Jesus' name. Those that agree say amen. Praise God. So we're talking about the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we would ask you, amen, to go into your Bibles, amen, to the book, amen, of John. And we can start at John chapter 14. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. As you recall, last uh, Bible study, amen, glory to God, which is Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Amen. Praise God. We dealt with the topic of the role of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When we were born again. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about being baptized in the Holy Ghost. I need y'all to understand that. We're talking about, amen, glory to God, the role of the Holy Spirit when a person is born again. That, that means when they've received Christ. Amen. Uh, and we said the, the role of the Holy Spirit, amen, within us when we're born again, it, it helps us. We bear fruit. Amen. That's the evidences of the Holy Spirit. Second, we said the Holy Spirit is our helper and our comforter. We said the Holy Spirit is our guide in the affairs of life. Amen. We said that the Holy Spirit gives us a knowing on the inside of what to do. And last but not least, we said that the Holy Spirit within us testifies of Jesus. Amen. So tonight, amen, we want to deal with the Holy Spirit upon us. Amen. We want to deal with his infilling power. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We want to basically talking about we talk, most of us in Christian that we use the term the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we also, amen, 
but use the term with evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. Now, once again, this is a very voluminous topic. Amen. Talking about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And so we're just going, we're going to divide it up into two sections. Amen. Two sessions. Amen. The glory to God. And so tonight we'll just deal with the fact that, amen, the uh, Holy Spirit is in with filling power. Amen. Uh, if you follow along with me in John chapter, amen, 14 <clears throat> and verse 15. I'm reading from the King James Bible tonight. It says, if ye love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Once again, last week we dealt with the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit that a person receives when they receive Christ. We call that being born again. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, also, if you recall, we said that this there should be a twofold work of God in the life of every individual believer. Amen. First of all, a person gets saved. They receive Christ as their Savior. They get born again. But also, God wants every every single one of his children, amen, to have the, 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 the indwelling Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. Glory to God. In other words, that he wants them to have power. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says you receive power. Amen. Glory to God. And I need you to pay close attention. Amen. To what we, amen, just read in John chapter 14. He says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth them not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you. Huh? That we would call that being born again. Amen. He dwelleth with you. He comes to live in you. Huh? And, and shall be in you, talking about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And with the infilling of the Holy Spirit comes power. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, uh, at the time at the time Jesus said this, amen, he was saying uh, the Holy, when he was talking to the Holy, to the, to the disciples, the Holy Ghost was not yet in the disciples. Amen. Uh, or and he was not in any of the followers of Jesus, but Jesus was giving them a promise. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He was saying that glory to God under this new covenant, the Holy Spirit is to be in all believers. Amen. Glory to God. That's why he said to his disciples, he talking about the spirit, Holy Spirit is going to dwell with you and shall be in you. Amen. So two different things dwelling with and being in. In. Amen. Glory to God. So Jesus promise to the disciples, amen, of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit was fulfilled. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, in the book of John chapter 20, if we, we if we could turn there real quick, John chapter 20 and verse 21. It says, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you as my father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. See, when Jesus said that, amen, he was re referring to receiving the Holy Spirit in the new birth experience. Amen. And what I'm trying to teach you to, for just for simplicity's sake, that there's two separate events. Amen. Glory to God. There's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. The new birth experience where we are regenerated. Our spirits are regenerated but with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. But then he's also going to mention, amen, a, an event subsequent to the initial, uh, amen, uh, 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 infilling. Amen. Glory to God. Or the in, that in, that uh, that new birth experience. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know we've been so used to using these words interchangeably, and I, I'm even having problems <laughs> using them interchangeably as I teach you. Amen. Glory to God. 
But I need you to understand the there when we get when we receive Christ as our Savior, we we are in fact born again. The Bible says, "He who was in Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new." So the Spirit of Christ, Amen, dwells within us. He lives within us. Amen. But that's not the same experience as the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's that's basically what I'm trying to get at. Because some I know I've spoke to a lot of uh, Christians who believe that when they receive Christ, that's all they received everything there is. Amen. Now, and I'm not saying that they don't have any fruit. They have a lot. They have the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. The joy, the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the pain. They have all of that. Amen. But what's lacking is the power, amen, the, 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 the Spirit's dynamic, the anointing, the power, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. And so Jesus gave, amen, the disciples, he gave his followers a promise, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God. He gave them a promise, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. So this experience here, when he breathed on them and told, and told them to receive the Holy Spirit, amen. This is not, the, it's referring to, uh, amen, glory to God, the baptism. This is dealing with, amen, glory to God, the new birth experience, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God. Because if that was the truth, then he would not have told them in the book of Luke, amen. You can go there if you want to, Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. If that was all it, he wouldn't have never told them to, amen, go to Luke. Go, go, go to Luke. Go ahead. Go to Luke. I, I need you to go there. So we stay on the same page. Praise God. When I say the same page, I mean of the same mind, the same accord. Praise God. Amen. That's Luke 24 and verse 49. He says, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But upon you, you need to watch that word, upon you, amen. And it's the promise of my Father. I, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye, or wait, amen, in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. A a amen, praise God. And so once again, he breathed on them, amen, in John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then in Luke chapter 24, he tells them, I, there's a promise for you. Amen. Glory to God. He tells them, amen. Glory to God. Right before he ascends, he tells them what to do. I need you to go to Jerusalem. I need you to tarry. Amen. There. Wait there until you receive power. How do they, what is that power? Who is that power? It is the Holy Ghost. It's a promise from the Father. Amen. And, and that promise is that you will receive power on the inside of you, who is the which is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So Jesus is dealing with a different work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers. Amen. He's talking about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon believers. Amen. To receive, once again, an endowment in of power from on high. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's, once again, there's a lot of good Christians. Amen. Glory to God. They've got, they, 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 they're good, but God, but we need that power, especially in this world we live in today. Glory to God. Folks are looking for some evidence. They look at the Bible says when you get the Holy Ghost, amen. Hey man, you shall receive power and you're going to be witnesses unto me. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus name. And so the power that we give that we receive, excuse me, or we exhibit as being born as being baptized in the Holy Ghost, excuse me. Praise God. It provides proof, infallible proof or a witness that Jesus is in fact who he said he is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. If you will, turn to the book of Acts, chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you have it, say amen. I'm going to start reading from verse 1. I feel like reading tonight. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to both do and teach. Now, I, let me pause right there. That's another reason why we need 
the power. We need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because it's one thing to teach, and this is for the preachers, it's one thing to teach, but it's another thing to do. And we're supposed to be able to do these things by the power of the Holy Ghost. All through the book of Acts, amen, What it, some, some theologians say, it should, it's called, of course we understand it's called the Acts of the Apostles. But you must understand, the, the, the apostles or their actions were performed or able to be done through the power of the Holy Ghost. A amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Let me finish. Now. He began to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm, had given commandments mm -hmm, unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Mm -hmm. He commanded them. All right. It's a commandment, number one. To whom also he showed himself alive. What, does, what do you mean showed himself alive? After he was crucified, when he rose again, he appeared to his disciples. Uh-huh. It says, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, after his suffering by many unfallible or unmistakable proofs being seen of them for 40 days. Praise God. Hallelujah. Being seen of them for 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so after Jesus was crucified, after he died, he rose again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he was seen he showed himself unto them, glory to God. Hallelujah. Spoke with them, glory to God. Showed them infallible proofs for 40 days, teaching them, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Let's keep going. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Huh? But to wait, that's the same word we use for Terry, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Mm hmm Glory to God. For in other words, you heard me say this before. <laughs> Talking about, oh, you heard of me. No, no, no. He's saying, you have heard me say this before. This came out of my mouth before. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence, or not many days from now, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days now. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. And then let's keep running. In ver I'm reading, excuse me, verse 7 says, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, mm -hmm. in his own authority, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. So he, we want you to zero in on the fact he said you're going to receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Amen. Glory to God. He's using the word upon. Glory to God. He used the word upon Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He used the word uh, up, upon glory to God in Acts chapter one, uh, in, in verse eight here. He used it in Luke chapter. He's telling us something. Glory to God. There's a power that comes upon the individual when they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. In this particular work of the Holy Ghost, amen, God desires to be present in the lives of every believer. This, this power is not just for the pastor. It is not just for the evangelist. It is not just for the apostle, the prophet, the teacher. It is not, it, no, it's not, it is not, hallelujah. It's for every believer. This, uh, amen, the Holy Ghost, amen, coming upon believers, is the purpose is to endue them with power from on high. What is on high? The power of the Holy Ghost, the power from heaven. Amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. So now, let's, 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 let, let me make, make a statement. Just like the Holy Ghost, amen, glory to God, 
the, or the Holy Spirit within amen the, the believer at the new birth is definitely an experience the bible says amen glory to god that there was great joy amen among the disciples after they received after jesus breathed on them amen fact of the matter we led a young man to the lord amen glory to god uh to a sunday uh the sunday before last amen glory to god and i called to check up on him and the word or the his testimony was he felt he was happy he felt joy. Amen. Yes, he he knew that he was saved. However, joy is of being a fruit of the Spirit. Amen. But it is not a gift of the Holy Ghost. A amen. Glory. Come on. It's a fruit. It is, it is, it is an evidence that you've been saved. Amen. But it is not power to be a witness. A amen. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It's not a gift of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit comes by way of the born-again experience. Come on. But the gifts of the Spirit come by way of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I need to say that. Amen. So it's a definite experience, amen, but there's also a definite experience, and there's a genuine spirit of being in filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that is something that believers can receive today. Amen. It's a definite, I don't care what nobody say. I know it's a definite experience. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, God gave this particular outpouring of the Holy Ghost, not only to the 120, amen, who were there. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. In that upper room. Let's, let's go there. Let's go to Acts chapter two. Acts chapter two. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It, it says, and when the day of Pentecost, this Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. What do you mean they were with one accord? Amen. They had mutual consent. Come on. They were in agreement. Now, that's another issue right there. When you want to have some power present in your ministry, in your church, in your settings, there's got to be a unified, we have to be a, a unified force, amen, glory to God. We have to be unanimous, amen, glory to God. We have to have group unity, having one mind and purpose, amen, glory to God. Amen, praise God. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so, so, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared amen glory to god unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon come on it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy ghost amen and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance amen glory to god Thank you, Lord God. We give God the praise for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, amen. Here they were in the upper room. Amen. Glory to God. And God in, in the Holy Ghost, just as Jesus promised, came in because they were there doing what they should have been doing. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we need to understand this gift, this outpouring of the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit is not just for those disciples, it's not just for those apostles, it's not just for the 120, and we'll get there in a minute, but it's for the church, it's for anybody who would believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. Once again, this is not a matter of the Father giving, amen, believers the Holy Ghost. Mm-mm-mm. -mm -mm. Because the fact of the matter is, God has already given the Holy Ghost to the church. He did it when? On the day of Pentecost. Amen. He did it on the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, He that's when he did it. Amen. He did it on the day of Pentecost. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. He did. That's when he did it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so now, 
Mm -mm -mm. I'm, this is getting good to me. Hallelujah. So he gave it then. Hallelujah. So now it's not a matter of God giving us anything because he already has. What the issue is, it's a matter of us receiving the Holy Spirit. It's a matter of us receiving the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Acts chapter 2 and verse 32. It says, This Jesus hath God raised up. Mm -hmm. Whereof we are all, we all are witnesses. Amen. Glory to God. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and have having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. A Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Which you now see and hear. And then uh, verse 37 says, now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, in their heart, and said unto Peter and to, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Hmm? Glory to God. How can we get on the same page as y'all? <laughs> Come on. We, huh? we didn't crucify God. What can we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent. What is repent? The Greek word is metanoia. It means to change your mind. Come on, change your mind. Oftentimes individuals confuse repent with confess. In other words, they'll say something to God. They'll say, I'm sorry. They'll say, For forgive me. Uh-huh. They'll say, I'm going to change. But if there's no change or no effort to change, then truthfully, there's no repentance because repent doesn't mean change your words. It means change your mind. Amen. Glory to God. It means change your mind. It means do something different. When John the Baptist came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was saying, change how it's time to change how we're doing things. All right, then he said he was saying it's time for us to come out from under the law. And get ready to get under grace. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so he says, uh, uh, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Look what he says. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Jesus promised that the Holy Ghost would be given that so that believers might be endued with power from on high. Then on the day of Pentecost, God did it. The Holy Ghost came upon the believers. Amen. And the Holy Ghost has been here ever since for believers to receive. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. The, now, need you to understand, these same men that received the Holy Ghost when Jesus breathed on them, all of them was in that same upper room on the day of Pentecost. Watch this. Go to uh, Acts chapter... One. Acts chapter one. Yeah, Acts chapter one. And uh, verse 12. Thank you, Lord. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet or the Mount of Olives, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. 
And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room. Listen to this. Where abode both Peter, James, and John, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. Look, these all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Huh? Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. All right, then. He had some brothers. Praise God. I'm not done yet. Verse 15, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the names together were about 120. So that, I, I told you I'd get to that part. So the uh, all of the disciples, except Judas Iscariot, was there. Jesus' mother, all the, the other women, Amen, praise God. And Jesus' Jesus' brothers. Amen, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And so now we see, amen, that these disciples, even though Jesus had breathed on them previous and told them to receive the Holy Ghost, amen, he breathed on them. A amen, amen. They, that's when they were actually born again. A amen. The Bible speaks of the joy that they experienced, the great joy. So that's a fruit of the Spirit, joy, praise God. But now we see that Jesus has, that has told them where to go. He told them where to be, and they went there. Amen. These same disciples, these same apostles, amen, glory to God, that had been breathed on. Now they're here for another subsequent event to his original breathing on them. Amen. I'm just, I'm trying to make it plain. Amen. Because there's some people that's teaching stuff. They're teaching that, oh, when you get saved, that's all there. You got it all. You know, you get that, that's it. And what we have is an, in the, is an anemic church. We have an anemic church group of believers no power they can talk they can teach stuff but no power amen glory to god hallelujah glory to god power comes with the baptism of the holy ghost amen glory to god these disciples these same disciples that were breathed on we find them waiting in the upper room per the bible see that's why when i when i teach you some, I take it to the Bible. Per the Bible, they were waiting in the upper room to receive this outpouring that was of the Holy Ghost, which was subsequent to when Jesus breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Point number one, if that was all too, if they had everything, why would they have to go uh, to Jerusalem, to the upper room to, to receive? If if all the, if the, everything they were to, to 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 have for witnessing and to be successful in in, in being a witness for for Christ, they would have when he breathed on them. Hmm? No, there was a subsequent event, a, another same Holy Spirit, but it's just doing a different work. One is the indwelling, one is the infilling. One is come on, come, I'm dwelling in you. You get the fruit, huh? I am the vine, you the branches, he that abides me. Come on, all right? You get the fruit, but now we want to get the gifts, huh? The power, amen. So these same disciples were waiting in the upper room to receive the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, amen. They were seeking to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. They were trying to be, to be endued with power by the Holy Ghost, amen. These are the same disciples. The same, the, the same one. And they're, they're there to receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Now, before I, I, I cut this off, I need you to understand something. You cannot receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost without being born again. I'm going to make that plain. 
Amen. If you have not received, if you have not been born again, meaning if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, there is no way you're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. Mm -mm. First, amen, glory to God, you have to be born again. You have had to have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Amen. Glory to Jesus' name. Then there's a subsequent event to that called the baptism in the Holy Ghost with evidence of, in the evidence of your having received initially is the speaking in tongues. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, sometimes we in church, we tend to go to these extremes. Amen. One extreme is believing, amen, that a person has all the Holy Spirit there is when he receives Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. On the other extreme, some people think that, amen, a person doesn't have the Holy Ghost in his life at all, at all, period, until he speaks in tongues. <laughs> all right? Amen. See, the, these people, you know, and, and that's wrong too. And so... I need to say in all this to say that the speaking in tongues is not the Bible evidence for being a born again. Amen. Speaking in tongues is the Bible evidence, is the biblical evidence for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. And only believers can receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Therefore, the disciples had to be born again before they could have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now you see where I'm going, amen, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Praise God, hallelujah, because that's what happened. It says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, amen. Hallelujah, glory to God, in the name of Jesus. So what I'm trying to teach you is there's not two Holy Ghosts. There's only one, but he does two works. Come on, he comes to dwell with and he comes to be in, amen, glory to God, dwell and he comes upon one, he gives, he, he comes to dwell in you when you, when you get saved, when you see Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. On the other hand, go to God when you, you need power to be a witness. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope, amen, and trust. I like this song, this dance in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope and trust, amen, glory to God, that I gave the uh, adequate, amen, expression, amen, glory to God to this word, amen. And I know is a lot of you may say, well, I want more meat. No, I'm giving you enough to chew on for a while because we're taking you from ankle, from the water being up to the ankle, to water being up to the knees, to water being up to the hips. And then we're gonna get you the water you can swim in. Amen, praise God. But we have to take it one step at a time, praise God. Because I'm, and I'm trying to teach, amen, glory to God, that there's two different experiences, amen. Glory to God. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I just praise you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for this lesson tonight. I bless you, and I bless your people, Father God. I pray, Father God, that they would receive this teaching. I pray that they have the understanding of this, of this lesson, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I praise you, Father. I bless you, Lord God. I bless you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. I thank you, God. I praise you. I magnify you. I exalt you. Father, I pray if anybody be out there that needs healing, Father God, if they're in the hospital, God, in the name of Jesus, if there's anyone suffering from the COVID-19, I pray their deliverance. I pray, Father God, by the power and anointing of the Holy Ghost, that they will receive healing right now. In the name of Jesus, I decree it and declare it. Oh God, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now for giving us the power. Hallelujah, to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You told us we could decree a thing and it be established unto us. I give you praise right now. We speak with new tongue. We speak with power words in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, right now. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise right now, Father. Oh, I thank you. I pray, Father God, for folks, oh, oh God, who have never received you as their Lord and their Savior, God, that they would in fact receive you as their Savior in the name of Jesus. And they receive you as their Lord and their Savior. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I thank you for it right now. I pray for our old church, oh God. I pray, Father God, that this lesson that I'm, that I'm teaching, Lord God, no matter how basic it is to them, Father God, 
that Father God, it is foundational and it is fundamental, fundamental and it is principle, basic principle in which we're supposed to build upon, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And so I just pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that they would open up their hearts, oh God, and receive, and receive this teaching. I thank you for it right now. And Father God, those who have never received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, that they would receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in which you have promised, in which you have already provided in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father. Perhaps there's someone out here, out there that have uh, never received Jesus Christ as your Savior. But I would love to give you the opportunity to do so. You know, the Bible says, glory to God, hallelujah, that in order to receive salvation, amen, we must believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, amen, and that he died for our sins and he rose again by the power of the Holy Ghost. And when we believe those things, we have to confess that Jesus is our Lord. And as a result of confessing Jesus as our Lord and believing it in our heart, then we are saved. Amen. Glory to God. Because the Bible says, whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if that's you and you need some help praying that prayer to get your, to get at, to confess Jesus, as your Lord and your Savior. Repeat these words after me, this prayer after me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I confess right now that I'm a sinner needing to be saved. I heard what the preacher said, and I believe what he said. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that he rose again by the power of the Holy Ghost. I, I confess him as my Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, as I confess you as my Lord, as my boss, as being my, my authority. I submit my life unto you, O God. And I thank you, Jesus Christ, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, beloved, God bless you. If you prayed that prayer, praise God. I'm here to let you know you have just been born again. Hallelujah. Now, what you need to do is get yourself in a good Bible-believing teaching church so you can start learning how to live as a born-again believer. Praise God. You need to get in a holy a church that's got the Holy Ghost in there. Amen. That believe, that embrace the Holy Spirit. They embrace the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Oh, yes, you do. In the name of Jesus. We would love to have you. Amen. Our church name is Bethesda Revival Center. Amen. We're located at 16681 Wood Road, and that is in the city of Riverside. We're located over near Mead Valley, praise God, hallelujah, and Van Buren Boulevard. Amen. So we give God the praise this is for you. Amen. We want to thank God for all of you. Amen. That's been sowing your seeds into our ministry. Praise God. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. We, in, we endeavor to do great things for the kingdom. We endeavor to raise up, glory to God, hallelujah, generations, praise God, hallelujah, of ministry, of ministers, amen, and young folks that love God, that know how to walk in the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost, amen. So we say God bless you. If you want to sow a seed, you can sow it. You can send it to BRC, that's Bethesda Revival Center, P.O. Box 8977, Moreno Valley, California, 92552. Amen. If you want to give online, you can give it to www.brchurch.org. I'll say it again. If you want to give online, you can give it to www.brchurch.org. Well, praise God. This is Pastor Sesame. Glory to God. We want to say God bless you. 
Amen. Glory to God. Next week, amen, we're going to be dealing with, amen, the gateway into the supernatural. Amen. Glory to God. The, since we've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, we're going to deal with the, the gateway into the supernatural. Amen. Well, God bless you. On behalf of myself and First Lady Renee Sessom, we say we love you. We miss you. Can't wait to see you face to face. And this is how we always do it. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And let the church say, amen. Oh, I almost forgot. By way of announcement, I want to remind you that tomorrow, amen, glory to God, Wednesday, we will be, amen, having prayer at 12 noon via Zoom teleconference. Thursday, we still distribute food. Amen. Glory to God. Get in touch with the, de the deacons, Deacon John, Deacon uh, Clarence Williams, Deacon John Collins. Amen. See what they have. Amen. Glory to God for you. Amen. Friday, we will return to prayer. Amen. At 7 p.m. via Zoom. And we will see you in church and the sanctuary at 11 a.m. on Sunday. Well, we want to say God bless you. We love you. This is Pastor Sessom saying God bless you. Amen. Stay safe in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.